Today it is delivery day for one of my customers and for the first time ever on the channel, we are here with them taking delivery of a GT4 RS. Let me take you downstairs to the delivery room and we'll take a quick look at it. This is one of the world's most expensive details. In this video, I'll break down the six major steps involved in carrying out a five-figure 11-day detail. Let's get started. After the car was delivered, it was shipped to status 30 days later due to winter conditions. The GT4 RS arrived pretty clean, which was refreshing. The wheels were a little bit dirty, but the paint itself was not terrible from a, from a clean standpoint. And uh, factory PPF here is kind of peeling off, just wanted to show that. Brake Buster does a good job of kind of the, the first step to soften and loosen all that brake dust, but I do like to shoot the foam cannon on there because it kind of emulsifies everything and mixes Brake Buster with that to make kind of a, cl a stronger cleaning uh, agent. Uh, but also it's a lot of lubrication so on black wheels we don't want to scratch them especially gloss black wheels scratch easily that's the extra lubrication to make sure it's safe the first step in this wash is to do a pre-foam and this is actually a step that in a lot of my other videos i haven't shown mainly because i feel like it's a little boring to show me wash the car multiple times but i keep getting a lot of comments about it so i wanted to show it this time so a pre-foam wash is when you use a really strong dilution of soap that sits on the car for five minutes you can leave it on for 10 minutes and it just cleans the car really really well when you're done doing that, you're going to rinse the entire car back off and you don't really need to rinse it off completely perfectly because you are going to foam the car again afterwards. But do your best to get 99% of the foam off. And then once the car is clean again, you literally foam the car again with a more appropriate dilution of soap and that's when we actually begin the contact wash. So the whole point of that pre-foam is that you get a little more of the dirt and contamination and things that can scratch your car, you get those off before you do the contact wash. This is a 1100 GSM microfiber towel. Now if you saw my video recently on the microfiber towel wash process, that towel was 500 GSM, the blue one in that video. GSM is how we measure like plushness of a towel. When the towel is more thick, it should trap dirt better, which means it's off the surface and more in, deeper into the towel, which should technically speaking mean it's less likely to mar or cause swirl marks because the dirt is hidden deeper into the fibers. On top of that, I do like that this towel is white because as it builds dirt, you get to see the dirt a little better than the blue towels, um, but the blue towels are still great. The biggest difference between these two are this has like a suede or silk edge and the blue towels are edgeless. They're like laser cut and literally have no stitching on the ends. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning using towels like this to wash your car, if you use a microfiber towel, that is dual sided and you fold it into four so you get eight clean sides. So if you use, you know, three or four towels, you get a bunch of really clean sides and you only use like one side per panel. And then you'll see as I'm doing in the video, you flip the towel over, you get a clean side and then you keep going. This is another step that I don't always show in videos, but man, is it really important for this car because this car will get full body Aztec paint protection film. Dust anywhere can ruin any panel you're working on. So there's all kinds of little dust and little dirt and all these things that build up in these little seams and cracks all over the car. If we don't get in here with a brush like this and clean it, when we end up spraying these panels with water later on to put paint protection film on it, the dust flows out of these little areas and they end up in the panel and then we get specks of dirt and paint protection film and it looks awful. So this is a super, super important step and we'll talk even more about this later in the video. When we're wrapping up the wash, I like to clean all my stuff to make sure it's clean for my next wash and I literally take my pressure washer, I put the microfiber towels that I used on the windshield and I pressure wash them out just to get all the dirt out. Unlike before, this is my last time rinsing the car, so I want to take my time here. I want to really make sure I'm blowing all the jams out, all the creases, all the seams, but also just the whole car and all the panels. I want to make sure there's no soap because it's going to make the drying step go way smoother. Also, you might notice there's a lot of like steam happening, and that's because in the wintertime, I do wash cars with hot water. It is way nicer on your hands. It's kind of like holding a heat gun in your hand. It's just a little more of a pleasurable experience, even though washing a car outside is not very fun when it's cold out. I like to spray Car Pro Hydro on the wheels because it's 
it's gonna be so easy to dry. So you're gonna see it's gonna make them very hydrophobic. And depending on the coating package, this can be all we do. And on the higher end packages, we end up just prepping the wheels out after this and then ceramic coating them. The point is it's gonna make them easy to dry. It's just effortless. I mean, the water is so easy to get off the wheels and the finish is very, very nice. It's like a cheat code for drying wheels, especially if you guys have really complicated wheels. The paint takes way longer to dry and that's because there's no wax or anything on here. Now you could technically spray wet coat on the paint here, but you don't want to do that because it would affect the way the polishes and the compounds work and I'm not going to polish or compound satin wheels. So that's a different story. The point is the paint took a really long time to dry and I really could just dry the car really quickly with towels, but I really wanted to go touchless here. So I took my time and I very slowly air dried the entire car, kept it touchless and I wanted to preserve the quote unquote perfect paint that I thought I had. The car looked pretty good, but this is always deceiving and we'll talk about the condition of the car in a second. Unfortunately, it doesn't look this good when we put the detailing lights on it. Typically after a wash like this, you're gonna see the rotors kind of have rust on them and it's pretty simple. Just take the car and do 10, 15 miles an hour, hit the brakes and it'll clean everything off. A lot of you guys commented about something funny to me in my last video. You said that I shouldn't be driving the cars back and forth to get the brake dust off the rotors because like I'm taking advantage of doing a joyride in the car which I thought was so funny like you guys think I'm doing like a Ferris Bueller's day out like why would I film it like I wouldn't film that if I was gonna do it because then the customer would find out like as every car that I drive every car that I sit in like 90% of them at this point I drive most of them I do a pickup and drop off so I'm in there for like 45 minutes one way almost two hours round trip on my GT3 touring video a lot of comments came in that basically just didn't believe that the car was in the condition that it was in they swear all Porsches are delivered with perfect paint. <laughs> the reality is, when you buy a car that costs this much money, I think many people, including even a lot of the owners who don't have the eye to spot this stuff, just assume the car is so much money, it has to be perfect. Like, Porsche would never have a car look like this. In eight years of doing this, every new Porsche I've ever worked on has had imperfections on them. And you can see all of the issues on this car. And this, guys, this isn't even the worst part of it. We have really, really bad sanding marks again. Like, the, the rocker panel sanding mark on this car is basically almost just as bad as the rocker panel sanding mark that was on the GT3 Touring. This is a tremendous amount of swirl marks on a rocker panel for a car that has 40 miles on it. Normally we see stuff like this on a car that might have 40,000 miles on it. Lots of just very superficial swirl marks throughout the entire car that are, you know, not terrible on a scale to one to 10. I'd categorize a lot of this stuff as like anywhere from a two to a four, but then back to sanding marks. Now this is on both sides of the bumper. These are like six to eight inches in width. That's a really big sanding mark. Throughout the entire YSAC hood, holograms and swirl marks. And I think there is kind of like a sanding mark in the center there where you see when the when the light flares out and diffuses all, all weird like that. These are horrendously bad etchings that are in the paint. They actually etch through the clear coat and leave this really, really bad surface. And I actually cannot PPF over this. So if I put paint protection film over this, it will actually cause the film to show what I'm showing you right now. You need to paint correct your car before you do paint protection film. Look how bad this is when I zoom in and magnify on this. It's really, really bad. And this also resembles that Viola Metallic GT3 Touring that had almost identical marks, but in the hood. And this, in my opinion, is when water, usually hard water, seeps underneath the delivery wrap. And then we end up having that water sit long term and that water sinks into the clear coat and leaves these really, really nasty etchings. The only way to remove these is to wet sand them off. We talk about using clay as going to the ER. This is like having open heart surgery if we have to wet sand it off and you only have 40 miles. For a lot of people, wet sanding is a very scary thing and it can be, but when you're doing it the correct way and you're doing it on a brand new car that you know has a lot of paint, it's really not that scary. Now what people get caught up in and where a lot of the problems begin to happen is a lot of people see a, a defect like this and they say, I am going to sand this to remove it. And then you sand, 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 and then you run out of paint. The reality is your mentality when sanding something should be that we're sanding to improve, not to remove. Jason Kilmer from KXK Dynamics, who's all about sanding cars, is that's kind of like his catchphrase, that you sand to improve, not to remove. So now sometimes you can sand to remove, but you don't want to necessarily chase because when you sand something, you remove paint. And after you sand it, you have to also polish it to get the gloss back. So you have to do like a two-stage system, which will remove clear coat from your car. When I say paint, I mean clear coat. So you have to be careful. That's why we sand to improve. Now you can see in the end of all this sanding, when I put paint protection film on the car, 
I can actually not see that defect anymore. And that's because paint protection film does a pretty good job of con concealing defects, but it only is so good. So it won't conceal really crazy defects. And if you thought that was the end of our troubles, it wasn't. We had a huge dust nib on the roof, which was another situation where if we put film over that, it was going to cause a problem. So we had to sand that down as well to remove it. So we were able to put paint protection film over it. This is leftover delivery wrap residue, and it's pretty easy to remove. You basically take some compound on a microfiber towel and just rub it on there and it removes it pretty quickly. The factory PPF that was on these vents was also peeling only with 40 miles, but uh, that's interesting, but doesn't really matter because we were removing it anyways. And because we are doing full body PPF and we want to do it the right way, which is the status way, in, in my opinion, we have to remove all this stuff. So all these factory things have to come off, all the stickers, the y stack sticker on the hood that's like the sticker so it's lighter, all the GT4RS decals, everything has to come off, and then we reapply those at the end of the detail on top of the PPF so it looks 100% OEM. The remainder of the paint correction actually went really, really smoothly. I say a smooth process because it would maybe be more complicated for the average person, but I specialize in paint correction. I also do so many Porsches that at this point, I'm just gonna start saying I specialize in Porsches because I do so many of them. This is how the car always should have looked. It has perfect paint now, it's completely dialed in. This part of the video, I think we're probably three to four days, maybe three and a half days into this detail at this point. So it takes a lot of time to really get a car perfect. Many of you are yelling at your screen saying, why didn't the dealership do all that? The car should have looked like this from the beginning, like you just said, why couldn't the dealership make this right? And the answer is the people at the dealership are not skilled enough to do everything that I just did to this car, especially the wet sanding and the more complicated correction steps. Interestingly enough, one of my customers recently had issues like this car had, and he actually had the dealership pay for the correction step and basically the prep work, which means everything up until this point in my video, they did pay for. I suppose with that information, if you have a car that looks like this, try and get the dealership to pay for it because I know it's happened at least one time. I make a lot of this stuff look really easy and the simple fact is it is not easy. I have just been doing this for a very long time. I eat, sleep, and breathe paint correction and detailing cars. So when you see me doing this stuff on camera, I might be making it look a little easier than it might actually appear. And the car is completely dialed in. There are no swirl marks and it is in the perfect condition to begin paint protection film, except the entire car is covered in dust. So when we do all these paint correction steps, especially that this car needed a little more of a, an intense paint correction, we cause and create so much dust, basically as the compound on the polishes and the abrasives kind of begin to wear out and dry out, they like shoot this little, these little specks of dust all over the car. And this is a major, major problem for a paint protection film, because literally if one of these specks of dust goes into the film, it'll basically, in my opinion, ruin that piece and make it not look right. We have millions of pieces and they're everywhere. They're in all the jams, the rubber seals, they're just across the surface of all the panels. You don't really wanna go wiping all this stuff off the car, you know, haphazardly, because if you do that, it's also very possible now that we reintroduce marring and scratching when we're wiping this stuff off. So the simple and fastest way to clean all this off and not scratch our perfect paint that we literally spent like two days or three days correcting is to wash the entire car again. So this is is now I believe the third wash of this detail and it is also the final wash. Basically we're going to just foam the entire car and I let it sit for a while, kind of like that original first pre-foam. You let this foam sit for about five minutes. It basically emulsifies and breaks down and softens all of the compounding dust. It kind of gradually pulls all of it off of the car and out of the seams and out of the jams. And then after you've waited that five minutes, you come back and you pressure wash the entire car. And you really want to focus like around the headlight to really want to blow out around all the jams and the seals and the windows and just every place that there is like a gap, you need to put extra water in there and make sure we're really flushing all of the dust out and all the soap out. And it's very, very, very important that we blow dry the entire car. So I literally did not touch the car with towels during this step. I blow dry the entire thing. And I did this very slowly and very methodically because we just we don't want to scratch the car and we want to make sure that we're blowing all the water and all, any potential leftover compound dust out of all these jams and seams. Now we can begin the very tedious and long process of doing a full body paint protection film on this car. So we're installing S-Tech Dino Shield. I really like having Paul around to help me do stuff because I think we have two different ideas um, of doing installs. His idea of quality is like, we want this to last 10 years and never peel off. And then my idea of quality is obviously having that but also I want like the film to look really good. So I want to tuck everything where sometimes he's like, I don't know if that's going to stick. So 
I, I have like a really hardcore focus on the aesthetic side and he has a really hard focus on the durability side. Neither of us are wrong. It's very important to understand that we're both right in thinking and wanting the things we want. We commonly meet in a middle ground where we both say, I think that looks good, but I also think that's gonna be durable. And I think it's really cool that when you when you put those two minds together, the focusing on those two things, you get a really unique install. It's very interesting to watch Paul stretch film because this is kind of like an art form in and of itself. When you put film on a car, it doesn't just magically lay into the you know contours and grooves of the car. You have to manually stretch it and pull it. And when you get it just right, it basically does lay how you need to. And then the squeegeeing process is relatively easy. Again, I use the word easy very loosely here. When you're squeegeeing, a lot can go wrong that can ruin a piece very, very quickly. You have to do everything right to put film on. And there's about 5,000 different things you can do wrong and any one of those things you do wrong can be catastrophic and you'll have to redo the entire piece. So a lot of people do plotting and there's a lot of reasons we don't do plotting but you couldn't even plot the fender on this car. This is so new to the market that the companies that make all the software that have plot, no one has plotter software for that fender. So you're hand cutting that fender no matter what. If they're not used to hand cutting that scares me a little bit. Even Ammo NYC Larry showed recently that his R8 had really 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 bad knife marks on it to the point where they cut all the way past his paint into the aluminum panels on his R8 and it started to rust and corrode. Now my installer and myself, we only hand cut. That's the only way we do it. And after doing that for a long time, especially like my installer, you develop the right amount of pressure to basically score the film and then you tear it along that line. Imagine folding a piece of paper in half and then tearing it, right? Like you have that like guideline to tear it. Now inexperienced people, especially ones that might be plotting routinely who don't really have everyday practice of hand cutting, I think those guys might be a little more likely to accidentally not have the pressure right and cut through the paint. And if you're doing that on a full car all day long, three, two, three days in a row, there's a, there's a good possibility you could have a lot of cut marks in it. And that always kind of freaks me out. This is the windshield gasket and the top part of that is the roof. I'm, I'm tucking the PPF behind the gasket. And then we're using this little uh, squeegee and I'm tucking this behind the windshield. And the point of this is, first of all, it looks good, but more importantly than that, you actually get chips all the time on the, on the leading edge of that windshield. It takes a lot of time to do this because I can't just cut this and then tuck that edge and I need to cut it and then I need to let it dry for like an hour and a half so all the water and the soap that we use to put it on dries out, then we do this pushing. If I just edge cut it, that two hours of dry time is nothing. I just, it doesn't exist. So imagine doing that on every panel of every part of the car. It adds tons and tons and tons of time. The main reason you're gonna ship a car to me if you live in Texas or California or Florida or wherever you are, is you're gonna ship it because you probably want full body paint protection film. Ah, the home stretch. So finally the, the paint protection film is completed and now we can ceramic coat the car. Now the S-Tech Dino Shield has built in ceramic, but I don't really trust that stuff to last like seven years. So we still ceramic coat over that. We actually did two layers of ceramic over this car. So we do a really thick base coat and then we do a flex top coat over that. This, this car is a dual layer. If you want to get technical, it's got three layers because Aztec has built in. Then we put the base coat and the top coat. So this is going to be outrageously glossy when it's finished. It's going to be extremely hydrophobic, very self-cleaning, and it's just going to be a joy to take care of and very easy to wash and all that great stuff that ceramic gives you. The blue stuff in the bottle there is Gion Q2 Tire. Uh, I don't know if there is a product in the world in the detailing market that smells better than this stuff. It might be the best smelling stuff you'll ever use. That is a great reason to buy it, but besides that, you might just wanna buy it because it has a really great finish. And you will see that it really gives, a, a, it's almost a mix between a matte and a satin look, but it's, it's just right. It looks perfect to me and I love the way this stuff looks. Lots of little things here and there to go over at the end of the car. This is what I was talking about where there's this like qu level of quality control that you know, we have that other people don't always have. There was a piece of delivery wrap on the inside of the car that even I didn't notice for about six days. We spend almost an entire day going over quality control of a car at the end. I like to look it over, then, you know, you need fresh eyes. Sometimes you gotta walk away for two hours, come back, and then something sticks out and practically punches in your in the face and you're like, how did I not see that before? And it's because you're too emotionally involved in the car. You gotta walk away, come back fresh, and then you see something you didn't see before. Of course we ceramic coated the air box on the GT4RS. It's like the reason you buy one of these cars. It literally sits inside the cabin of the car. There's no glass or anything there. So when you're revving this thing to 9,000 RPMs on a, on a fun drive, that air box is six inches behind your head, nothing separating it. That's 
incredible. I can't wait to drive this car. The owner was nice enough to tell me that he would let me drive it in springtime, so we will probably have a video on that. Stay tuned for that. When a car is finished at status detail, especially a new car like this with 40 miles on it, it will be delivered back to the customer in the best condition that this car has ever been in, period. Obviously, the outside was not delivered in perfect condition. We've already shown all that, and now it is. So, the inside needs to be perfect. There were little marks here and there on the seat that were from, I don't know what, but they were little bits of smudges or dirt or this and that. And in general, people have been in this car during the manufacturing process, the dealership, people moved around. There's been people in this car. I want this car to be picked up by the customer in pristine, 100% perfect condition, no questions asked. So everything on this car got touched or cleaned or ceramic coated or PPF, everything inside and out was cleaned meticulously. A bespoke status detail is an incredibly rare and special thing. You see, there are many detailers around the world who are very good at paint correction. Some are very good at ceramic coating. When you get lucky, you get a person who's very good at both of those things. There are many very talented tint shops around the world, as well as many talented PPF shops around the world. All three of those things typically are separate businesses. When you can find a place that can do virtually 90% of all of that under one roof in one location with one employee and the attention to detail and passion that I bring to the table, you truly get something extraordinary. Everything I literally just said is resonating with viewers of these videos and that's why we're getting so many people who are shipping cars to us now. We have four or five cars being shipped from out of state like a thousand miles away there because they want a status detail. If you enjoyed this video and especially if you made it this far into the video, like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a Porsche person who might enjoy it or just a car enthusiast who might enjoy it and I'm gonna see you guys. Cool, 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 huh?